Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Modded Skyblocks 2. So, since last episode, I have gotten a few things. First up, this is potatoes. I actually got a potato from a zombie. So, that's good. We have the, the core crops anyways. We have carrots, we have potatoes, we have some flax. I could plant some more, but uh, right now one is fine. This is all pumpkins, down through here. And then right here, this is wheat, and then we have rice planted. I gotta make a little bit more dirt, but it's a super easy process now to make dirt. Um, over here, there was a couple comments on the last two videos about placing a block of cobblestone above this, uh, using Draconic Evolution, you know, the place block feature. And what this does, this still counts as a valid multi-block. You can see right here, multi-block is formed. However, we don't lose heat. And we can throw items in, take items out, and do all this stuff without the need to break the block and replace and lose all the heat each time. So it does make crafting things so much easier. It really, really does. So anyways, today we are going to be moving on to metal creation. So we've gotten through everything else. Now it's time for metal creation. And to do this, and I was looking at some new types of food and stuff. Um, right now, I'm just kind of sticking with the cactus fruit. It's so easy to make, and there's some other alternatives that we could go with. I do have a bit of wheat. I mean, I could make some bread, but the cactus fruit gives so much saturation and as easy as it is to craft. I don't tend to be really, really hungry in this pack. You know, I'm usually just like a couple, a couple meat shanks off. So I'm just kind of rocking the cactus fruit for right now, and pretty soon we're going to change over to a different food uh, once I expand the farms out a little bit. But the first thing that we are going to need to make is Primus Alchemical Dust. Okay, this requires charcoal, which we have tons of, a bit of blaze powder, and some gunpowder. So let's see, how much gunpowder do I have at the moment? I have four pieces. It takes three, and then two blaze powder, and that's one for three. So we can make our first piece of Primus Alchemical Dust, or our first bit, it's five at a time. So we'll just throw a piece of gunpowder into there. Pow. There we go, we got our blaze powder, and then, how much heat does this require? 335 heat units. There we go, 561, and we'll do three gunpowder, two blaze powder, one charcoal. Did it throw the charcoal in there? I don't think it did. There we go. And pow, we got ourselves five pieces of Primus Alchemical Dust. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to make ourselves an alchemical fusion table and then a condenser as well. Um, this is just planks and then a stone alchemy catalyst which takes more primus alchemical dust. And I had 60 more charcoal in there, so... I'm gonna get a little bit of stone cooking up. And depending how this goes, we might possibly get cobblestone automated today. I don't know. That's why I haven't done much building with it, because I'm like, well, we're getting really close, semi-close to... Uh, automating it, but I will say that we're moving into probably one of the hardest parts of the pack, and that's getting our ores started. Um, it's very, very involved at first. Okay, so we've got that stone cooking up. Let's take a quick look at the condenser, and I think we'll probably start with the stone condenser. There is a wooden one, um, but stone, eh, we'll just go for that. So that's a bit more smelted up stone, and then more of that catalyst. So I'll tell you what, I'm just going to throw a little bit more stone in there. Get that smelting. Okay, so the condenser, the stone alchemy catalyst, there's that. There's one of those. And we've got the stuff now to get our condenser, so we'll go ahead and grab that. Bum, bum, bum. And then we just need the alchemical fusion table. So eight more pieces of stone. And I think maybe after today I might make another furnace. Once I get a little bit more gunpowder. Uh, there is our stone alchemy component. And then the alchemical fusion table. There we go. Okay, so those two are done. And I think for right now, which right now, as you can tell, I'm not really going for looks. I'm just putting things where they can go. Uh, because some of the setups early on are so large that it's hard to... You can't really plan for the future at the moment. Because we're going to condense things as we progress and whatnot. So... Um, I guess the alchemical fusion table, I'm just going to put inside the building here. So we'll just put that right here. And you can see we have this GUI. Now what we need to do is 
we can start making crystal shards and um, alchemical ore dust. So I think probably the first thing that we should go for is iron. So that's going to take a couple blaze powder and some rotten flesh. And I was saving my rotten flesh that I got. Um, and gunpowder, we can make that... I believe it's flint. Yeah, one piece of flint makes three gunpowder. So that's why I haven't worried too much about grinding creepers, because we can make this stuff very, very easily. Oh, wait a second. My bad, that takes 1,120 heat units. Okay, never mind. Um, I think we're going to have to be killing some creepers. Okay, I just got one piece of gunpowder. That's fine. I'm just going to keep an eye on it. If we get lucky and we get a catalyzing gland, we'll be set for a little bit. But we'll go ahead and throw that in there. And let me put in another piece of charcoal. Pow. Okay, so there's our blaze powder. And then if we combine that with two blaze powder and one rotten flesh, we're going to get some iron alchemical ore dust. So I think that's the first thing, the first step that we're going to want to take. Rotten flesh. And then we're going to have to put in a primus alchemical catalyst. And you can see this starts running, and this bar kind of fills up. So let me run another one. There we go. We got our first iron alchemical ore dust. Whoops. Okay, and then we're going to have to get some crystal fluid. This is crystal shards. These are crafted um, in the alchemical fusion just using glass, um, or glass shards work as well. All right, that's why I was smelting up this glass, because we're going to need a bit of this stuff. And we'll go ahead and put that into there. It's going to start running. There's two crystal shards, four, and so on. Okay, so we've got crystal shards. We have a little bit of iron alchemical ore dust. Um, this part's going to be, I think, the most grindy part, is getting the, uh, the materials that we need, the ores and stuff like that, um, for this initial part. I may end up expanding the mob farm between this episode and next so that we have more mobs being spawned, because... We're definitely, definitely going to need it. But the nice thing is these zombie hearts, just keep in mind that you can break these down for multiple rotten flesh. I've actually got a few of those. So the rotten flesh and stuff, not too big of an issue. The gunpowder is where we're suffering. Um, and I haven't actually gotten any catalyzing glands, I don't think. Um, no, I haven't gotten any this whole time. Okay, so to progress, now we have to start creating metals. And you can see right here, if we hit G and open this up for metal creation that we are going to need an alchemical fusion table, a crucible, two fluid droppers, a condenser with a casing, and that's it, yeah. So I guess we'll start with the fluid droppers. We're going to need two of these. These just require cobblestone. Seven pieces of cobblestone. I'm going to have to mine up a little bit of that, but that's fine. All right, there's 24 cobblestone. That'll be good for a minute. And we'll go ahead and get our two fluid droppers. And then we're going to have to get ourselves a crucible. This one right here, it's going to require seven bricks. I may actually have the clay lying around. I'm not for sure. No, I have five pieces. Okay. How much heat? Okay, we've got plenty. There we go. Two pieces of dirt. And then I think I put my extractor up. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and get another cactus cutting knife. And we'll just slice down some food. This stuff is so easy to make now. And really, I can expand the cactus farm, and I'm actually going to expand the cactus farm fairly soon. Um, maybe between this episode and next, we shall see. But I want to go ahead and get started with what we're doing today pretty quickly. Alright, so extractor. And we'll just turn both of these into clay. That's fine. And we're going to need to smelt up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and smelt like eight bricks. There we go. And I believe that's everything. Our chemical fusion, crucible, fluid droppers, condenser with case. Oh yeah, we're going to have to make the casing. That's fine. Casings are easy at this point. So we're going to go with a stone casing. Um, four chiseled stone. Stone rods. Stone gear. I believe I probably have enough stone on me at the moment. So Stone gear, stone rods. Actually, that's going to come out to be perfect. That was not intended. So, stone casing, stone condenser, and then we just need the bricks and crucible. 
Okay. So if we take a look here at the setup, let's see, we've got two pieces of glass, there's crystal shards, and I'm going to want a couple more pieces of glass. Go ahead and break one of these down. And we'll get that smelting up real quick, and we are ready to set up our crucible. Now the worst thing is, it's kind of tall. So I think I'm just going to build like a little platform that leads up to the top of it, I think is what I'm going to do. Um, it's just zombies, okay. So I think we're going to have this set up. Will this not plant on cobblestone? I'm starting to think that it won't. I think it may have to just be dirt. I'll change that over in a minute. It's no major rush. Um, I think we'll have the ore processing. Actually, if we set it up right here, that should be fine. So what we're going to do is we are going to, I'm going to have it set up like this. And that way if we had like a hopper and maybe a chest or something that we add on later on, that would be fine. So the stone casing is going to set right here and we'll have the condenser right down here. And then above that is, yeah, above that's the four pieces of glass. So I'm just going to put cobblestone right here. We'll do glass, glass, glass. And then, of course, this sandstone doesn't actually have to be here. So go ahead and pull that off. And we'll do glass right there. And then we're going to have, let me bring this kind of little platform thing up a little bit. And let me remove this cobblestone go and then above this is the double fluid droppers so I'm just gonna put one right there and then the next one goes right there on the top and then we put let's see let me get a torch and I guess the crucible I guess we'll have it setting like right here and then we can get up to the top of this if we want Okay, so I believe that's all set up. And I believe I could put a... I think I could just put a chest down here. Well, the chest might catch on fire because of the lava. I don't know. We're going to try it. We're going to try and see what happens. So let me get some chests. Because this is going to dump either onto the ground below it or into an inventory or something below it. So hopefully that doesn't burn. Fingers crossed. It's really, really close to the lava. Maybe setting it up right here wasn't... Uh... Aha! These are wanting to catch on fire, that's for sure. Maybe that's good. Okay, well anyways, what we can do is, in the iron condenser, we can put in our alchemical, iron alchemical ore dust down here, and then up here, we can drop in our crystal shards into the crucible. And we'll go ahead and dump a few of them in there. And then we just have to give it a little bit. The crucible has to melt down the crystal shards, and then it's going to send them down through the fluid droppers, and then they're going to be right above the condenser, and it's going to allow this to run. And I think it's going to take a little while because the torch doesn't provide a whole lot of heat. So while we wait, I'm going to just break some cobblestone. I just heard it run. It made a, like a little ting sound. So I believe... Yeah, I think it's one crystal shard per. So right now it's running through another one, and then it'll probably just deposit the fluid there above the condenser. And if we take a look, we have one iron ingot now. Woot. <laughs> okay, so very, very expensive. Okay, so now the next thing that we need to turn our attention towards is the Tinker's Hammer. Because we're going to have to start making plates. This is this is where things get very, very expensive, very, very grindy. Um, to make plates, we are going to need four iron to make one iron plate, for example. Um, and then the Tinker's Hammer is going to require some lead, some sticks, and some iron to make the Tinker's Hammer. So four pieces of iron, it's going to require a lot of gunpowder. I'm definitely going to have to expand the mob farm setup. It's not large enough at the moment. Um, if I could get a few creepers, it wouldn't be a problem. Let's see, let's put in some more alchemical dust and get this running. We're definitely going to want some more iron. That's for sure. Iron alchemical dust. And then we're going to see what we need for lead. And you can see the crystal liquid's there, right above the uh, the condenser. And you can see that it's running right now. Let's see, can I throw in another... Yeah, I'll go ahead and throw in the rest of the crystal shards, because it's basically just backing up in the fluid droppers, so... 
Alright, so we have two pieces of iron right now. <laughs> We're steadily getting there. Steadily. Okay, so lead. Let's see what we need to make lead dust. Uh, lead alchemical ore dust is blaze powder and clay. Okay, so I'm going to go expand the mob farm setup. See about maybe getting some more gunpowder and stuff like that. Because we're going to need a lot more. Um, it's it's time that we, we expand this. So Probably should have done it sooner, but that's okay. That is a-okay. So I'll be back in just a minute. Oh, look what we got. We got a sheep. <laughs> I'm just going to put him in the house for right now. I don't really have a space for him. I was off building that second little mob area. And of course all these are just temporary. Just bear that in mind, but... Um, I was off over there building that, and the sheep will not come through the doors. All right. All right. Come here. Will they not, will they not walk through the doors? How bizarre. Let me pull these off for just a moment. And maybe he won't be able to get out. So, um, I was planning on setting up something for animals here fairly soon, so we have some meat coming in. But, um, if they'll spawn up, that's fine. Um, hey there. Anyways, I did get a couple pieces of gunpowder. Um, the the second one, I built it three high. Just so, if maybe some endermen spawn or something, that's fine. Um, let me go ahead and throw this into there. Alright, so there's six more pieces of blaze powder. I think the main priority right this second. Well, yeah. We're going to need a basically a bunch of iron at this point. So I'm going to get that running. I hate where it has to fill this bar up to get iron. So there is four iron dust. Let me go ahead and throw this into there. And that means we're going to have four iron. That's enough to get our hammer. And then we're going to have to get lead, of course. So, let's see. Oh yeah, mobs are spawning in a lot faster with two rooms. And I see what looks like a couple creepers. No, just one creeper. Oh, by the way, something strange. Cactus has been doing that. It's been like just growing into the air. I don't know why that is. And when I break that one, yeah. I'm thinking it's just like a visual bug, maybe. And I will say that we're getting close to the point where we're going to look into automating mob farms. Before too long. Before too long, so. Not right this second. Oh, there's four more gunpowder. That's great. Alright, so 12 more blaze powder. Okay. And I'm also going to need some dirt. I don't need a whole lot of dirt right this second, but... Actually, my shears are done. Okay, so there's another nine pieces of dirt. That's perfect. I'm going to go ahead and convert like a couple of these over. Then I can use the rest to fill out my rice farm. There we go. Clay. And then we'll combine that together. Get a clay block. And, okay, I'm out of alchemical stuff. Okay, so we're going to have to make more alchemy. Primus alchemical dust. Charcoal, blaze powder, gunpowder. Okay. Charcoal and blaze powder, not an issue. Gunpowder. see, do I have any... No, no creeper spawns yet. Okay, I got enough. Gunpowder. Blaze powder. Charcoal. And we can make our... Next batch of alchemy ingredients. So there's five more. By the way, I did get an ender pearl, and I got a soul gem for zombies. Oh wow, pyrothium in this pack. Look, it takes molten core. Molten cores, netherrack dust, sulfur, coke dust. Huh. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and put in our Primus Alchemical Dust. And we'll get that running. And we should get a piece of lead. Yes, awesome. Okay, and then the rest of this I'm just going to run through. Because I think the next one that we're going to go for is, the next item that we're going to go for is the Iron Combustion Heater. Oh god, Iron Heat Component. And we're gonna have to we're gonna have to do that each time, I think. Yeah, so we're gonna need a bunch of iron. Like a whole lot of iron. <laughs> as much as we can muster. Okay, so we got four iron alchemical ore dust and then a lead. It's not too bad making this stuff. It just takes a little bit of gunpowder. Like quite a quite a little bit of gunpowder. And if we could get lucky and get some catalyzing glands, we'd be set, but we are not. So we might we might actually automate mobs pretty pretty quickly. We'll see. It seems like it's a little bit better to make this stuff in bulk. Because like right now, you'll see it's going to make a piece of iron. And then it keeps running on that one iron alchemical ore dust that we already made. 
and now it's going into the second one, I might get one extra iron for running them in bulk. So the larger amount that you make and then run it through the condenser, it seems like the better um, output that you're going to get. So, all right. Yeah, so there's another four iron, and I ran out of crystal shards is the issue right now. So, okay. Which I just smelted up a bunch of glass. I'm going to go ahead and throw this into there and let that run for a minute. Make us some more crystal shards. Okay, and yeah, I think the issue that I was having with the lead is I'm going to have to have at least two lead for this to work. Like at least two two lead dust. Um, because one's just not enough to make an ingot. It's a more expensive ingot, so. Alright, so two lead alchemical dust. And this should make some metal. And I forgot to get this crystal fluid melting so I'm gonna give this just a second while it gets that heated up okay so this should be all set let's throw this in there and I should think that two dust should make an ingot should be right about an ingot yeah it's gonna be about half right there lead's a little bit expensive luckily we only really need like one piece right now to get our hammer uh, and then we'll be set there we go Okay, and now we can get ourselves a hammer, a tinker's hammer. <laughs> Whoops. And then to get, okay, the first thing that I was wanting to get is the combustion upgrade, um, moving into the iron combustion. Uh, let's see, because I'm going to want to make redstone. That's like one of the main things I need at the moment. Um, and redstone, combustion... We need 880 heat units. Though I tell you what we could do. I'm going to look into this. Because we could make the melter from embers. It's not that expensive. It requires some copper, caminite, iron. Um, and then from the melter, we can melt the iron down. Make molten iron. And then send it into a stamper and make our plates. One to one. Instead of going with the compressor, go into the melter and stamper. That's what we might do. I'm gonna give that some thought. Okay, it's actually been a little while since I was last recording and I decided we're gonna go ahead and automate mob farms. Okay, and I went ahead and built out the structure because the structure building that takes forever. Um, it took quite a while. Um, by the way, we do have three sheep. I bred one of them. But we got two sheep and then I bred one and we got a chicken as well that spawned on the grass. Um, and then in here, we have three catalyzing glands, as well as a bunch of gunpowder. Okay, so I'm going to make up just a bit of blaze powder real quick. And I'm probably going to go ahead and just turn all this into blaze powder, I do believe. We'll go ahead. Okay, we still got eight left. That's fine. That will be okay. And do we have any rotten flesh, or do I need to use the zombie hearts? Oh yeah, we got 15 rotten flesh. Okay, let's go ahead and throw that in there so that can start running. And I'll show you what I've built. I shall show you what I've built. This monstrosity. Um, and it was funny because when, when I got this, like, nearly done, all of a sudden, like, nothing but creepers was spawning down here. Like you can see, I've got one here, one over there. I did remove the holding cell right here in the front because we really don't need these I left this one for right now we're probably gonna tear it down in just a second just because I was killing some mobs and of course catalyzing gland like I wasn't getting any of these things to drop and then like we're about to have the gunpowder and stuff issue totally resolved and then like creepers are like oh yeah we'll spawn that's not a problem and I'm hoping that we get some redstone from a witch because that is possible I just haven't had any luck getting any redstone but let's see right now we have four iron and what I want to do is I want to make something a little bit different. Instead of going for straight for the plates this episode, we are going to use this to kind of work on our mob farm. And once this is in place, honestly, I don't think making the resources is going to be that bad because we're going to have tons of, tons of gunpowder coming in, which is, of course, the main thing that is really any kind of issue with making lots of resources right now is is mainly just mob drops gunpowder rotten flesh stuff like that so all right i'm just gonna go ahead and throw this into there that's gonna start running 
And let me go grab those crystal shards as well. Okay, so that's making iron for us. I'm going to go ahead and put the iron I had on me into there. And right now it's having to smelt some of that down. Okay, so let's go over here. Before we do, I'm going to get a bucket. I'm going to get my extractor as well. So now we're ready to kind of finalize this thing and get it running anyways. So if we head up here, I just did it all in slabs because mobs light can't travel through slabs. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but um, I'm <laughs> not a problem by me. I like it. And then if we come up here, there's kind of just a walkway, and then we can climb up inside of here. And it is two and a half blocks tall. I do not want Endermen spawning in here. Um, I'm already going to have to deal with, like, Basals spawning in here, which I don't really want them spawning in here because they fly and it messes things up. Um, but they should... They're pretty rare to spawn anyway, so I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue because they'll probably despawn pretty quickly as well, so... Um, but anyways, what we have is, this is a 20 by 20 structure, and we're just using a canal drop system. So, the mobs get pushed over here, and they fall all the way down. It's about, um, it's 28 blocks falling. It could be a little bit lower, um, but I went ahead and just did 28 blocks, and I was like, whatever. <laughs> so, you could make it a, a little bit lower of a drop but and i will say that we're probably going to spruce this thing up in the future once we have flight and some other things and once we have other ways to move the mobs right now water is the only option once we get like conveyors which i'm not for sure how far in conveyors are they're actually not that far iron redstone and then rubber which we can get really we could start getting that right now or leather is another option which leather we could do right now with drying racks so, because I can, I can fish. I have the ability to make fishing poles. And there's some other conveyors, like fast conveyors and all that. But those are a little bit farther in. But we're not too far from conveyors. So we'll probably change this up just a little bit before too long. Um, but what I want to do is, let's start off by making... I'm just going to make a small infinite water source. So we'll just do water right there. And then our extractor. Shift right click. And now we have a little infinite water source. And what I want to do is I just want to put these canals in. So we're going to put a water block right there. And then a water block right there. And you'll notice then it pushes all the way to the end here. So what's going to happen is the mobs spawn on this. And they say, well, I want to cross, I want to cross this canal. And they jump into here and then they just get pushed down and fall. Um, now, player kill items. Of course, we're not going to get those with this system. Uh, but that's fine. Not too worried about that. Not really a big concern. Because, like, yeah, sure, I would love to have catalyzing glands and stuff coming in. But, I mean, as long as I have gunpowder coming in, I'm going to be happy. And this is automatic, and it's on a server. So, by next episode, we'll have plenty of stuff. So, my goal is this episode, and this episode might run just a little bit over the 30 minutes. That's okay, because... I was I was grinding up that gunpowder, and I was just like, okay, this is... We're going to need to automate this. We're going to have to do this right. So, all right, so there's that. And then this last canal, um, let me go ahead, and I'm just going to break off a piece of... Uh, no, not right there, because I don't want the water flowing down all this and breaking my ladders and all that mess. Okay, we'll just do like that, and then I'll just fill out the rest of this. So then whenever we're done, we can just jump through here. Alright, so we'll put the last two pieces of water in there. And there we go. So the canals are done. And then let's just... Get rid of that water source. Yeah, we'll break off that wood. Okay, so as far as setup goes, I mean, this is done. It's, I mean, it's that easy. It's basically just taking the time and the resources to build this massive structure. Which, using just slabs, it's not really that bad. So, let me go ahead and pull up all the lights real quick. This could be a little bit dangerous, depending. Well, mobs shouldn't spawn right here, because I'm too close. I, for some reason, I'm used to doing these out of Cursed Earth, so I was thinking, like, oh man, this could be really bad. But, actually, it's not that bad. Okay, so then we can just pop through here, seal that up, and that's done. So here in a second, once we get down here, we'll probably start seeing mobs fairly soon falling through this system. And I'm going to go ahead and chunk load this. And I'm about to stop these mobs from spawning in here because I don't... 
I don't really want that. I'm just going to put a torch inside there. So that mobs can't spawn here because we don't really need them right there. And then I'm going to remove this structure here because we also don't need this. I do have a couple ender pearls built up. Uh, once we get to where we need ender pearls, probably by that time we'll probably make some adjustments. Raise the roof on the mob farm and then have it spawning endermen as well. So Because we're really not too far off from that. Once we get iron and redstone down, we're going to be set on those resources. Huge eyes are up there. I do see mobs. It looks like up there. So they're probably going to start falling through there. And probably by the next time we go over there, there are probably going to be some items on the ground. So, But I'm hoping that we'll get at least a decent amount of maybe iron from zombies, redstone from witches, maybe some glowstone... And then, of course, a lot of gunpowder and rotten flesh and stuff like that as well. So, Alright, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to make some hoppers. So, just like that. And we have iron chests. What does it take to make these? Oh, iron plates. Okay. Which takes copper plates. Okay. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Mobs are falling through. Okay. Um, let me get... Oh, wait. We have a crafting table right over here. I'm going to want some chests, and we'll start with two, and then I'm going to need two more toppers and two more chests as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the chest down, and I'm happy to say that I actually did not die when I was building this, because Garlic in Your Eye and Prodigy were both on a little bit earlier, uh, Prodigy 1975, um, while I was building this, and I told him, I was like, I'm, I'm going to be surprised if I don't die while I'm working on this, because... Just being up there and building and everything. And I'm happy to say that I did not die while building it. But it is a 20 by 20 internal dimension size. So that's the internal numbers for it. I'm just kind of expanding this out a little bit so we have a little bit more room to move. Because I'm going to want chests on both sides of this, I think. Oh, and I just got a skeleton and creeper just fell through here. Um, now that I think about it, mobs were changed so that they only move like when you're so far. So this might have to be more of an AFK farm. I'm not for sure. Which, if so, that's fine. I'll just make like an AFK platform about halfway up. Um, okay, but let's go ahead and we're going to put in our chests right there. And then before long, I'm going to upgrade them to iron chests because we're going to have plenty of iron and all that stuff before long. But then what we'll do is we'll put hoppers on the back feeding into that chest. And then I'm going to want Two more chests and two more hoppers. So there's our two chests. And this chest, I'm going to put it probably just on the back side here. So just like that. And then this hopper, I'm just going to have it feeding into this chest. And, oh yeah, I didn't craft the hopper yet. Alright, so hopper, there we go. And let me just come up about halfway. And I'm just going to put an AFK platform because this may be more of an AFK farm. I hear stuff hitting hitting the ground right now, so... I think right in here should be good, though. And we should be able to just hang out up there and just kind of AFK there. Oh, wow. Did he survive the fall, really? Huh. Okay. I'm just going to throw that into there. Um, but if we take a look over here, we've got, yeah, see, some gunpowder, some bones, all that stuff. And right here should be far enough that mobs can still spawn, but the mobs should be able to move as well. How does this guy... There we go. Seems like he took a little bit of damage, but it wasn't enough to kill him. Which, really, there are spikes. We could make spikes. Like, even just wooden ones right now. Or, no, not wooden ones. Stone. That's what I might do, is put stone spikes, like, above these chests. Um, so that if things land there, they're going to, of course, patrol around. And then they're going to end up hitting the spikes and killing themselves. But for right now, let me go ahead and get just a little bit more blaze powder. I'm going to need a little bit more iron. Also, at the moment, any eggs I get, I'm just kind of breaking them um, for the time being. I'll probably get these automated before long. Um, probably before, like, between episodes, just put the chicken on top of the hopper and lock him in so he can't move. And then hopefully get another chicken and start breeding them. But let me go ahead and get this running because we are going to need just a few more pieces of iron. And I'm going to try to avoid using up my catalyst, uh, catalyzing glands and all that stuff. The... Zombie hearts. 
Okay, so there's our five pieces of iron. And then that means I can get the last hopper that we need. And I do think that next episode we will probably just really, really briefly um, automate cactus. I'm going to go ahead and probably get the area built out. And then we can just add in like the, the pivotal parts, uh, so to speak. Just because I would like to have cactus just coming in naturally. Alright, and that should be... Like, this is all plugged up so stuff can start falling in. Oh, we did kill a witch. Didn't get a uh, redstone, but that's what I'm wanting to get is redstone. So, I know Garlic said he had gotten some redstone from killing a witch already, so... I am, I am keeping my eyes open. I, for some, I was thinking it was disabled in the pack. Because I've killed quite a few witches I haven't gotten any, but um, he said he was able to get some, so... Um, I'm going to go AFK for just a minute, edit up some footage, and then I'll be back and we'll see what we've got after a minute of hanging out here. And then later on, once we have access to things that can move mobs, um, we won't. this won't necessarily be an AFK farm then. Okay, I'll let this run for just a, a little bit, and so far no redstone. Um, that seems to be pretty rare. We have killed a fair number of witches, and nothing too crazy. I was hoping to get a little bit more sugar, but... Uh, Two pieces, that's fine. We'll be able to make sugar before long. But the redstone, I was wanting to get a block breaker in place. But that's fine. Next episode, we'll be able to make redstone pretty much right out the gate of the episode. Um, because all we need to do is upgrade this combustion thing, uh, combustion heater, and we'll be able to make redstone. So, And that's just the process of making a bunch of iron um, to upgrade the combustion. And then we also never looked at the casing. We are going to need to upgrade. We'll go to probably an iron casing. Yeah, that's max heat units of 1538. Um, that's iron plates, iron rods, iron gear. So we're just going to need a lot of iron. But, I mean, at the moment, if you noticed in there, we have an absolute ton of gunpowder and a ton of rotten flesh. So we'll be set. So I'm going to get a lot of that stuff prepped up and ready to go. And then at the start of next episode, then we can just, very, very quickly, we can throw together, we can throw that together and then start getting into automatic cobblestone, and we'll really be able to start automating a lot next episode. So, or working through a bit of automation anyways. Um, we'll also, I'll probably build out the platform for cactus, because now we have, well, I was going to say, I was going to do a little bit of building, maybe between this episode and next, but I'm waiting for cobble, is kind of what I'm waiting for. Um, that's one reason I wanted to get the block breaker, but I've let that run for a little bit. No redstone, that's fine. Um, we'll get that next episode. So we'll probably automate cactus next episode. And cobble production. And then do a little bit, maybe a little bit more automation perhaps. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And if you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button. And go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay up to date with when new videos come out. And I hope you guys are enjoying the series and everything. And if, of course, if you have any questions the build or anything, let me know. And I'll do my best to get those answered for you. And until next time, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I will see you guys next time.